The results of last week's Patreon poll are in, and all the comments who predicted Windy City would win were just as correct as when they predicted In Rear Endings Day would win the July 4th poll. The moral is, voting is important, but I think we all know why Jack-O-Lantern and Spaced Invaders got more votes than Windy City. It's because last time a forgotten melodrama was chosen, you killed Diane Weist! Plus, I now have a reason to own this double feature DVD of Spaced Invaders and Kazam! He's a rapping genie with an attitude and oh my god, I don't care! Ugh, enough of that. It's not like the Spaced Invaders tagline is any better. Earth will never be the same. I'll say, these little shits destroyed it! Spaced Invaders is a science fiction homage about a group of dim-witted Martians who invade Earth, but unfortunately pick Halloween as their date of attack, resulting in the townsfolk confusing them for trick-or-treaters. But don't worry, it's not just a funny idea for a five-minute sketch that's stretched out to a 90-minute movie. It's a funny idea for a five-minute sketch that's stretched out to a hundred-minute movie! The film comes to us from Touchstone Big Blue Pill Pictures and, uh, Smart Egg. If this was a smart egg, then why is it on its way to the furnace? The film tries tricking you into thinking you're about to watch Total Recall. At this point, I would settle on Red Planet. But I would like to point out that the 1990 film Space Invaders has more convincing effects than Independence Day Resurgence. Yep, Space Invaders. FUCKING SPACED INVADERS! Even if it looks like their ship is on its way to anally penetrate the heartland, the Martians are currently in a battle against their nemesis, the Arcturans, and the Enforcer droids. And while this may seem like original Star Wars... Where is the Admiral? He summoned us here. The Admiral's tour of duty has ended. And what of the Admiral himself? It has the dialogue and the voice work that sounds like a Star Wars prequel. But don't worry, if one annoys you too much, they might die. I'll not send my boys out to Arcturus with an enforcer drone breathing down my neck. <laughs> That's gonna haunt their dreams for the rest of their lives. Not even Jimmy Carter as director of photography could bring class to this production. The film takes place in Big Bean, Illinois. It's called that so people wouldn't question why everyone smells like ass. But that's not the worst part of this town. What seems to be the problem? Nothing these two barrels can't solve. Threatening town hall meetings with shotguns is really no big deal to the sheriff. Character actor Royal Dano plays Wrench Mueller. He needs to come up with money to save his farm, which is being taken over by Ron Burgundy's redneck brother named Clem Becker. Are we serious with these names? We haven't even gotten to the aliens' names yet! I really hope this movie just branches off into the plot of Hell or High Water. Cletus Von Big Bank here is played by voice actor Greg Berger, who you might know as Odie and Cornfed, but probably not from Space Invaders. He's the least creepy one in this scene. Ain't you kind of big for a Boy Scout? The old man hangs out with Boy Scouts. Meanwhile, this space battle looks intense. Sir, the Arcturans have destroyed the remainder of the fleet! I've sent a distress signal to all ships across the galaxy, but... What's with the ridiculous voices here? Just get Greg Berger, he's right there! This phallical space battle gives Flesh Gordon a run for its money. It's on its way to grab Earth by the pussy! The sheriff's daughter, Kathy, is played by Ariana Richards, who is giving an introducing credit in the film. It's her first movie, and by first movie, I mean it's her fifth movie. She's upset, not because they moved to a new town, but because she has an exoskeleton. Everyone's probably gonna show up dressed like scarecrows and pigs and clowns and stuff. So? I'm just not sure Big Bean is ready for aliens. And because she speaks in clunky foreshadowing. 
the local radio station is playing the War of the Worlds radio broadcast because they remember what happened on the Halloween they played Sammy Kerr's last album. Let's give them something a little less headache-inducing. This world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's, and yet as mortal as his own. Damn, this Maurice LaMarche recording is riveting. The Martians, however, hear the broadcast and think that fellow Martians have come to Earth. Good thing the station wasn't playing Groove is in the Heart, or this invasion would have been too funky. I hope they arrive soon so that lines like this can stop. I'm probably the only alien for a billion miles. Oh my god, what's your costume? An alien or Captain Foreshadow? Thankfully, the Martians make a safe landing. Damn. Termites are munching on our barn. And sorry, that's just Marty McFly crashing into the old man Peabody's barn again. Time to get a good look at these alien effects. Look out for that heat ray! Help us! Help us! We're all gonna die! <laughs> I've seen Nuki. These costumes don't look that bad. But one of the voices sounds really familiar. We got a torqued out digifram, our mega spaz redundancy pile is on the blink, and it looks like we bruised our poo poo. Why does the alien sound like Jack Nicholson? I ask this because what would I know about reviews that compare your delivery to Jack Nicholson? It's starting to feel like a setup for Mars attacks. Why would Mars want to attack the puny, insignificant forces of Earth? Especially because there's two out of three branches of government working for him, and that ain't bad. Wrenchmuller has to look through his hoarding just to verify that they're Martians. There's Martians! I knew it! Oh, well, Jim, it looks as if me and you is the Earth's only hope. We're fucked. These genius aliens are debating on what a country road is. Jesus Christ, are they ever going to get to kidnapping Santa Claus? By the way, the aliens' names are Bipto, Giggywig, Blasny, Pez, and Ziploc. I don't know which alien is which. They all look the same to me. Yeah, I said it. And I'm not sure if any of them have any semblance of a real plan. Really, you give these simple earthlings far too much credit. <laughs> Except to get Ben Tramered as they cross the road. <laughs> too soon. Between the aliens and their shtick, and the awkward small talk between Kathy and her new duck friend. What are you supposed to be anyway? I'm a duck. I'm not sure this movie has a reason for being over 90 minutes. It's important that all of this is kept in the movie. And what the fuck, the alien was hit by Burger, who's just openly carrying a bottle of booze with him as he drives? Bad Sheriff, bad! The Martians, however, run into Sheila Bravlovsky and begin to threaten the human race. Prepare to die, Earth scum! <laughs> yeah. Maybe later. Huh? Have fun, boys. What? <laughs> hey, okay, come back here. I'm talking to you. And that's pretty much the movie. Does no one realize that if these were costumes, they're the most intricate Halloween costumes ever created at the time? These dim-witted Martians aren't even smart enough to know that you really shouldn't get in a car with a random stranger. And why is she collecting children? Hmm. Well, we have a full tank of gas and lots of empty bags. What shall we do? She's gonna cook all of them. I've seen her house of candy. Why the hell is this Zorro guy still in the movie? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't laugh. Please don't do anything with your face. You look like you're gonna die from having a stroke. They also have the power to possess humans, I guess. We must keep up the appearance of a normally functioning fuel dispensing depot while we act as undercover agents of Mars. Good God, Third Rock from the Sun doesn't hold up. I guess when he scooped this alien off the front of the truck, he just figured it was a giant ball of snot. Big Bean is the dumbest Illinois town, and it's not even real. Hey, get him here! 
Ah, oh, line up. It's just a stupid toy. You're not a toy at all, are you? And good job adding a cute robot to tug at my heartstrings. It's working, goddammit! Okay, so not only does this guy openly drink and drive, but look at what he gives the kids. Cigarettes! Cigarettes. Okay, forget it! Cigarettes? Seriously? Does this town even have a sheriff? Or is that just a costume as well? Uh-oh, don't go grabbing the Zagnut or Beetlejuice will eat you. I'm still weirded out by this whole car trip. She asks if anyone knows the aliens, which if she has to ask who they are, she really shouldn't have been putting them in her car. I would like an answer, young man. Have I got an answer for you? Perhaps I'll just have to remove those little heads of yours and find out for myself. Hey. And she wants to eat their brains. Get the fuck out of there! Or smart off to her, so she'll throw you out. When someone points a quad vectored hyperthermic cosmo blaster at you, it's a fair bet you're about to become toast. <laughs> Uh-oh. Get out! Great, she kicks them out for their attitude, but was okay with it when they fired their weapon. Naturally, the kids are our only hope against these invaders. This is the more realistic remake of Red Dawn. Though it feels like way more scenes could just end with someone saying, Anyway... Nobody gets away from Russell Pillsbury, Deputy Sheriff. Anyway... Get back to the Nicholson talk. Gee, officer, what seems to be the problem? Great, there goes my insurance. Maybe you better step back and get the big picture here. That's what more shock treatment would have done to McMurphy. The chief was right to suffocate him. But there is a surprising twist to all of this. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen. Out of character, to assure you that the War of the Worlds has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. That wasn't Maurice LaMarche at all! One of the droids pops up to destroy the Martians. No need to shoot them, just let them eat all the Halloween candy. They'll quickly get diabetes. Wrenchmuller takes the wounded Marsh into the police station, and by police station, I mean the Halloween dance? Okay. And then this clown gets the idea to inspire his fellow clowns to take over the country. Luckily, they have a fine sheriff to handle things. Look, I, I don't pretend to know everything that's going on here. That's why your citizens drink and drive, bring shotguns to town halls, and hand out cigarettes on Halloween. Why would they believe you about an alien invasion? Perhaps these people should check on their kids, if they even have any. I think there may only be about five kids in this town, some of which are the worst characters in the movie. They're all falsely! They're all falsely! Hold it, hey! Come back here! Never mess with a frisbee champion! That kid is so annoying, he makes the Martians look downright dignified. And take off that fucking duck bill! I'm so mad at that ducking kid that I'm losing track of the plot. Forget it. We are now cutting off your only means of escape. Yeah. I don't know what is happening. I shouldn't be saying that in the middle of spaced invaders. So I might as well assume the aliens are going towards something else shaped like a dildo. Look, they're making their own penis head to attach to it. Anyway, after the movie accidentally sits on the remote and switches it to Halloween 4, we get back to the Martians and whoa, -ho -ho, careful there, fellas. You know what happens when you turn on a throbbing silo too much. It comes on your face. <laughs> Another big one. How many silo dicks have you pleasured? The duck is still in the movie for some reason as they try fixing the ship. Look, kid, you helped me out of a jam, so I'll level with you. I don't know anything about this invasion thing, but if you help me out here, I'll do my best to try and stop it. You better do what he says or he'll show you man trouble. 
Soon the Martians realize that War of the Worlds was only a recording when they confront the local DJ about the signal. The, uh, shame you missed the ending, though. That's the best part. How so? Our germs got them. Jan? Yeah. Spoiler alert! He's trying very hard to fix the ship. Just give it the blue pill from the beginning. That'll give it a jolt. Much like this stick of dynamite the farmer has. Stay there. You know, I'll be right back. Whew. Well, that'll teach him from ordering from Acme, I suppose. Just kidding. Wrenchmuller tries blowing up the ship, but is put into DVD fast forwarding. How is that going to help this ship take off? Again, well, still better effects than a lot of today's alien movies. And the stupid cop pulls a gun on the duck kid, not realizing 50 feet away is the damn ship. They can't hear all this screaming. When I say whoa, I mean whoa. Jack Nicholson does a fine Yosemite Sam, probably because there's so much dynamite in this movie. Jeez, how are the other aliens gonna find this ship? <laughs> Easy enough, and yet the sheriff still can't find this fucking thing. It's been about five minutes, and not only has the dynamite not gone off, but just putting it in a random hole takes care of it. Should have saved it for the lynch mob. What the hell is that thing? Who cares? Just shoot it! <laughs> it's really sad that our motto hasn't changed since 1990. There certainly is a lot stacked up against these Martians. They have strategic air commands? nuclear-powered submarines, and John Wayne. Actually, John Wayne passed away years ago. We just have Patrick Wayne now. You might have a chance. That is, if you don't care about bad karma. If you let your friends blow up the Earth, I'll never speak to you again. I kind of think that problem will take care of itself. The aliens threaten the rednecks of blowing up the Earth. Now none of them will ever speak to each other again. Let's let them have it. Give me that. Prepare to die, Earth scum! Oh, <laughs> well, we all survived when Fat Grandma blew up the Earth. I'm sure we can survive these aliens as well. Prepare to die, Earth scum! Prepare to die, Earth scum! I'm gonna make sure they carve that on your tombstone! Or at least play that line from every TV and theatrical trailer of the movie. Trust me, I remember. But despite wanting to blow up the planet, the kids still like them. But Dad, they're not really bad. They're just stupid. I'm pretty sure they're still bad. A person who tries murdering someone else is still bad, regardless if he's too stupid to load his weapon. And I think this household should know a little something about stupid. This movie still has a half hour left, and I think it's easy to see why. Oh, give me a home where the asteroids roam and, and the, the bleeps and, and the, the fuzzy mugs play. Because the campfire sing-along is really fucking important. I'm pretty sure at this point Zorro is possessed by the Keymaster. Oh, hey, the kid finally took off the duck costume. I finally figured out why you're here. You were sent here to ruin my Halloween, weren't you? And he's still annoying. So there's a reason why they can't just leave. I'm sure if I listen closely, I could understand why. The hyperfusion feedback governor back on the ship just had a meltdown. The ship's hyperdrive will implode, creating an ever-expanding hole in the space-time continuum. Hmm. I wonder if there's a Christian Slater alien. Ooh, Royal finally figured out the truth about Charlie. Laser eyes. Speaking of eyes, the actors playing the Martians had next to zero visibility out of these costumes, which could possibly explain why they just stand there most of the time. They create a diversion for the townsfolk, though I think putting up a TV and showing Monday Night Football would have been enough for them. Good thing Wrenchmuller is here to help them. Say, can you tip that contraption up on its butt? Please tell me you're talking about the ship, which is most certainly not shaped like an ass. 
damn, this distraction is getting a little out of control. The farm side is impervious! <laughs> All right, that's it! Mom's gonna hear about this! <laughs> and they said Goodfellas was the best film of 1990. But I am glad this plot is resolved. He can never drink and drive again. But who keeps giving Ranchmuller dynamite? It's guaranteed to remove stumps and... Well, seriously, stop giving him dynamite. If I take my glasses off, it's not so much like I'm watching the Ninja Turtles, but a Turley Gang movie, where they have the powers of mind control. I am so proud of you, son. And so, you are no longer my robot slave. Live and be free! Well, that was nice of him. He freed his slaves. Just when you think they're about to leave and it'll all be over, the damn droid shows up again. The gravity hyperfusion Fido Cuisinart will blow up and then the Earth will implode and that'll throw Mars out of orbit and it'll go crashing into the sun. Very well. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! Mm, good job, kid. Your rambling got us all killed. So they have to get out of there within minutes, among other things. I'm animal. You're polypropylene. And besides, they really need you. I don't think the romance between the girl and the robot is going to work out. Where the hell did that come from? But when the droid says he's going to finish off the Martians once they reach orbit, Wrenchmuller has an ace up his sleeve, or dynamite, rather. I would like to present you with an award as a token of our appreciation. The Tri-Nitro Toluene Award. Yeah, it's better than a Golden Globe. Now that that blows up the droids and the Martians leave them with something they could get at a party store, we soon find out that, yes, these Martians do have assholes. Seriously, the reason they're able to lighten the load on the ship is by flushing their toilet, sprinkling what I assume is alien shit all over the town. It's still not over yet. Clem Becker still wants Wrenchmuller's land. I forgot that was even a plot point. It feels like it happened 18 hours ago. But when they find out he's growing alien shit, the deal is off. So great, you live on a shit farm now. The end. And the movie doesn't even leave us with words of encouragement. The last time I put a cherry bomb under a garbage can, the garbage can didn't make it does that even mean? This movie is like reliving being nine years old, seeing this film in the theater, and experiencing very early movie disappointment. Believe me, I know. But the film made back its budget, bringing in $15 million against a $5 million budget, and its director, Patrick Reed Johnson, appears to be such a fan of classic sci-fi that he's even the director of the Star Wars Love Letter 52577. But I could not get over how misleading this poster is. That didn't happen in the movie, and if it happens in the poster, it has to happen in the movie. And a simple switch of making this a black and white film would have made all the difference in the world. It looks way more like a campy sci-fi movie now. Then I could have knocked it for being a campy sci-fi movie, even though it already is. There's one nice thing I'll say about this, is that at least the DVD isn't a double-sided disc depriving us of DVD artwork. Am I the only one who was always really disappointed to get a new DVD and then open it up only to be staring at the sad, faceless disc staring up at you? Ugh. Now, if you'll excuse me, make my own Space Invaders homage. I'm gonna call it 42790. It'll be a fucking tearjerker. Kids, 3D and driving just don't mix.